Facebook, what is cracking? Welcome to my podcast. I'm doing this live through Facebook, not because the product is to be on the Facebook in the video, but it keeps me honest. If I do it live, I don't retake it and retake it and retake it. Again, it keeps on going. So welcome, glad you're here. I also have it set up if you have any questions, put it in here. The topic today is gonna to be fear. When I start the podcast, I'll be talking to the podcast. But again, the product, the product is not the Facebook Live. This just keeps me, keeps me uh, honest and also keeps me <laughs> dat fan. What's cracking? Nick, my lighting, <laughs> like my lighting. Dat fan made fun of my lighting. Told me I looked like I was in some kind of '70s sad sitcom. So I fixed it. Okay, we're there. Okay, there we go. Anyway, I have lights. Uh, so again, the product is not this, the Facebook Live. This is just to keep me honest. But if you have any questions or want to put any any input in here. We're going to be talking about fear today. Fear. Fear. Because you want to be happy in life, you will have to address your fear. Let me get this all figured out on here. What is going on? Sorry, Facebook. i got to figure out how to get on here live so I can answer your questions. Ignore. Okay, we're on here. Okay, we're going live. In five, four, three, two, one. Hey, what is cracking, everybody? Thanks for tuning in and listening to episode number five of Pervasive Happiness. Thanks for joining me. The whole goal and objective is this, is to increase our happiness, to learn this art and science of enjoying life even more. And today we got a big one to talk about. Today, what we're going to talk about is fear. Fear. Fear is the devil. How you handle this, how you handle fear has everything to do with your happiness in life. Fear is your big blocker, can be your big blocker from happiness. It can also be your big motivator to great things in front of you. There's a, there's a couple. You can't just not deal with fear if you want to have any type of level of happiness or a joyful life and existence and have fun. So I want to talk to you about a couple different types of fear. First of all, though, let me thank my sponsor, Gamergy, Gamergy.com, energy drink for gamers. I'm not a gamer, but I am an energy drink guy, and these are awesome, especially this Epic Green, one of my favorite ones. I got the purple, I got the red. Thanks for all you do, Gamergy, for the setup and the extra lighting and everything. Hey, so two types of fear, because this fear, fear will kill you if you don't address it and you don't do something about it. But there's, but there's a good fear and a bad fear. There's two different types of fear. So let's talk first about the good fear. There's a good fear, it's actually the best fear. It's actually the best thing you can have in your life if you allow it to motivate you, if you hit it head on. I'll give you an example. If, you, you know, if you're, your comfort zone is, is in one spot here, you know, anything you want in life is gonna be outside of that comfort zone. What that takes is you practicing the muscle of getting outside of your fears, of breaking out of that fear. So there's a certain type of fear that you need to head, hit head on, a good fear. And that's the kind of fear that, you know, anything, the magic in life, everything you ever wanted, think about this for a second, anything and everything you ever wanted in life is just on the other side of terror. Usually the things that terrify you the most are the things you need to attack and go after and overcome. And what happens is, is that's where the quan is at. That's where, that's where the magic's at. That's how it motivates you. So how do you do that? What I believe you do is every single day, every single day, do something that you fear. Do something that you fear every single day. And if you hate fighting, go fight every day. Go to a jiu-jitsu school or something. I know that worked for me for a really long time. I was terrified to go to jiu-jitsu because those guys used to kill me. But I kept going back and going back and going back. And now it's just something that I'm not, now it's something I'm addicted to and I love. There's there's you know anything in life if it's public speaking that you're afraid of go do it just find yourself a way to do it even if it's starting off small just get out there and do the stuff that you fear so find something every single day that you're afraid of and do it if it's if it's talking to girls go talk to girls go randomly randomly i have so many guys i talk to that just cannot seem to talk to girls i don't know what is it's just just do it go practice go to the mall do this. Go to the mall and ask random girls for their phone number. Who cares if they say no? You'll practice that and you'll get better and at least you'll have 
the balls to go out and talk to someone of the opposite sex. It blows me away how many men just will not overcome that fear. Really, it just takes going out there and doing it. But anything, anything you fear in life, figure out what it is for you. Find something you do every day and exercise that fear muscle. One of the things you can do that will, that will change your fear is change the words you use around fear. I had an opportunity to train for a week with the great Randy Kocher, light heavyweight champion of the world, also the heavyweight champion, also a super good guy. And one of the most profound thing I got from that week, well, I got dumped on my head about a hundred times and realized there's levels to that uh, whole fighting thing. But the, the most profound thing he said the whole time is someone asked him, someone said, don't you get nervous before you go into a fight? He said, no, I don't get nervous, I get excited. I get excited, not nervous. He said, it's the same thing. You sweat, your hands sweat, you have to pee, you get butterflies in your stomach. It, your body sees the same thing, but it's a different word. And I thought, man, that is so profound that if you take fear and turn it into excitement, what that does to your mindset and anything in your life. So when things come up that, that you're fearful of, if you just change the, change the word to, that's exciting, you, you get to go through it. The big fear though, the other fear, the devil, the fear that I believe is the devil that, that crushes that crushes people is the paralyzing fear, the fear of stuff that's not even real, that's not even happening, that darkness of, of you know, the fear of death, the fear of, the fear of going broke, the fear of cancer, the fear of stuff that, you know, the fear, that, the fear that's not a reality. You know, most of the stuff we, don't, we fear doesn't even happen. And the stuff that does happen, we couldn't have changed it. Anyway, this is the stuff that you have to, you have to address this in your life because this will paralyze you, this will kill you, this will, this will remove the quality of your life if you don't deal with the fear in your life of, of, of these things. And so I found, you know, I, I'm not looking to over, to, uh, you know, you know I, I recently went through an experience here about a week ago, a week, and, a week or two ago, where the fear just completely left my entire life. Uh, for a couple days, for a few days. I mean, literally, like the tide of fear just left. And, you know, it came back in in different ways. And, and I've just kind of realized that fear is part of the human experience. You're not going to be able to go through your entire life without fear. So you've got to figure out how to get t deal with that stuff. And there's a, there's a way that I'm going to teach you that I, that I have, that I actually I stole from someone else that just absolutely works for getting the fear out of my mind, out of my spirit, out of my soul. I'm not looking to over-spiritualize anything and give you any kind of crazy kumbaya, you know, but I do believe a lot of fear is spiritual and I wanna give you some practical ways because I have found a, a practical way that just flat out works on, on uh, getting rid of fear. Getting rid of fear and anger, which by the way, whole separate subject, but anger is fear. I mean, it's, you, I could go into a whole long thing about how it is. I won't now. Anger is not really my thing. I never really was super an angry person, but I've dealt with enough angry people that I know it's just fear. It's all just boils down to fear. You know, the, um, the, you know, the biggest fear you could have in life, you think, oh, what's the worst thing that could happen? If you really sit back and say, what's the worst, worst, worst thing to happen? The worst thing to happen is, is you die. And, <laughs> and the thing is, you're going to anyway. So if you really embrace that, I believe death is the best teacher in life. Death is the best teacher in life if you'll let it be. If you will realize that this is a limited time offer and that we're all going to experience in this physical form anyway, death. I mean, we know that we're more than our body. We know that we know that. We just know that in our spirit and our soul. Somehow we know we're eternal beings. But death proves that to us. I mean, we know it. But when death comes along, it, 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 it proves it. We know that we're not our stuff that we have, that we acquire our wealth, none of that stuff, that status. Death proves that because we take none of that with us. And if you're really, I think you should meditate and think about and contemplate death because it helps you live more life, in my opinion. You're going to live more life knowing that death is, death is coming. I mean, think about it. If you had one week to live, you would certainly live differently than you're living right now. But the reality is you could have one week. I mean, there will come a time where you breathe out your a breath and you don't take another one in. And the more you really think about that, it just, if you, if you take time to reflect on that, you realize, you know what? 
let me just not take this stuff so seriously that I take so seriously about, about what is going on in my life. So here's how I want to give you a simple, a simple system that absolutely works to get the fear out of your life. And this is a, this is a system that I <laughs> stole, <laughs> but it works. So I'm going to give it to you. And by stole means I borrowed it from someone else and didn't really steal it. But anyway, um, here's how it works because fear is like this. It, 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 you, you, you have these five or six or seven core fears and they go around your head like a merry-go-round. Merry and you think there's hundreds of fears, but it's really only a few. So the first thing you do, step one, is you write it down. You gotta get it, you gotta get, develop some system that gets the fear out of here and onto a piece of paper. And here's how I do it because it works for me. I write it in a letter to God. You can write it however you want, but I just write, Dear God, I am fearful that, and I just write everything, and I just keep singing. I just keep starting a sense. I am fearful that, and then whatever comes to my mind. I am fearful that, whatever. And even if I can't think of anything, I'll, I'll write. I'm fearful that, and I'll sit there and think till something comes up. And what, what's happened is I'm fearful that, that, I'll, that I'll lose my company, that I'll lose my business, that sales will be bad, that I'll, you know, and you start drilling in, you're pretty much, that I'll live on the streets, that I'll die, and then you, you just write all this, all this junk that comes into your mind, that, that this will happen, that I'll get sick, that this person will die, that this person will die, that my kids will get hurt, all this stuff, it just keeps coming, you write it all down on a piece of paper. And take all the time, write every single thing. I write it in letter form. God, dear God, I'm fearful of that. And I just fill the page completely up. And here's what happens. When you stop and you take a look at that, a couple things will happen. Number one, you'll realize how much fear has a hold of you. How much fear is will consume you and will, 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 will absolutely crush your life. You'll realize how much control it has of you. But the other thing that you'll realize is some of the stuff is so bizarre and whack and unrealistic that you almost have to laugh at yourself when you see what you write down. You know, some of the stuff when you're drilling, the next thing I'm writing and writing, and it's that, that I'll be homeless. And it's like, well, where did that come from? Where, do, where does some of that stuff come from? Or that, I'll, that, I'm, that I'm gonna die. You know, it's just all this stuff that just, it's, it's not even realistic. So I get it all down on a piece of paper. I write it in letter form, dear God, I fear all this stuff. I read it to myself, I look at myself, I just contemplate for just a second, and then I do this. I get on my knees and I pray to have them removed. And what I do is this, I read it in letter form, I say, dear God, I, I'm fearful that, and I read everything out loud. And then at the end I say this, I am now ready and humbly ask you to remove these fears, pray only for knowledge of your will for my life and the power to carry that out. Thanks, love, Tommy. I write that all down in letter form, I get on my knees, I pray it, I, and then what I do is I get up, I rip the thing up. Actually, I don't rip it up. I burn it in my fire pit out back. Still slightly arsonist in me. Um, but I want it to be gone. And what happens is it's gone. There is so much power in taking the fears in your life out of your head and putting them onto a piece of paper. There's so much freedom that comes from removing that fear. And that's not to say you live a fear -fill, a fearless life. It just It's just to say that it, it, it exposes it for what it is, so it's not just this thing running around, a, a merry-go-round in your head, fear after fear after fear, that will paralyze you. Puts it down on paper, makes it manageable, and it, and it just makes it realize, man, I can, I can, I can get rid of these, and I can, I can pray them away. And you know, whether, whether it's you think, whether it's you, you, you know, whatever you think will work. I think sometimes we think, especially my mind thinks way too much, way too fast. We think we can think our way out of fear but if you think about it <laughs> the thinking is what gets our heads spun up and into this fear so you got to find a way to get it out of there onto a piece of paper and get rid of it for once and for all um, you know so there's two types of fear again there's a type of fear that's going to help you grow you hit that fear head on and then there's the bad fear that paralyzes you and you use that tool and you write it down and you take care of it and you get get rid of that fear and you got to use a little discernment for which one is is there's a time for everything if you know if that obviously when the police kick in your door um you have that fight or flight you we all know this you freeze when the police are there but when when the police have guns on you, you freeze when bad guys have guns on you, you run so you got to decide that's not the time to hit your fear head on that's the time not to hit your fear head on but there's times when you've got to you know the stuff that you're afraid you just got to do it and get it done and, and, and whatever whatever it takes to break through and psych yourself up and get it. Because once you do something one or two or three times, 
um, you're, <laughs> it's no longer a fear. Then you got to go into something else that's going to make you grow. If it's in the bad fear, I'm telling you there is power in writing it down, saying a prayer, get it all on paper, and then rip that thing up, burn it up, and by faith just walk away knowing that that fear is gone. Anyway, thanks again for joining in for this episode. Next week, I'm going to be having a one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, the Saddleback with uh, uh, Mingo up there at uh, Saddleback on um, going to talk about some some God stuff. Should be awesome. Pastor at a church uh, pretty much wants to know why I left the church. So that should be an interesting conversation. I'm sure that will be. I'm sure I'll get a lot of awesome messages after that one is done. But anyway, tune in for that next week. Again, thanks to my sponsor, Gamer G. Again, not a gamer, but still drink these energy drinks. Thanks for your sponsorship. Thanks for your listening. God bless you. Facebook Live. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see who's on here. Oh, thank you guys for weighing in. Yes. Good to talk to you guys. I'm out. Have a good evening.